Hey guys, welcome back to Mogul Monday. Today we'll talk about how Bernie Madoff defrauded Americans out of billions. Let's get into it. Bernie Madoff's Beginnings Bernie Madoff is a former chairman of the Nasdaq Stock Exchange and a hedge fund investment manager. He is best known for running the world's largest Ponzi scheme, in which early investors are repaid with money obtained from later investors rather than actual investment income. Madoff grew up in the Laurelton neighborhood of Queens. He earned a bachelor's degree in political science from Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York in 1960. After spending his freshman year at the University of Alabama, he briefly studied law at Brooklyn Law School before co-founding Bernard L. Madoff's investment securities with his wife Ruth, who worked on Wall Street after graduating from Queens College, City University of New York. With a degree in psychology, Madoff spent specialized in penny stocks, which were very low-priced shares traded on the over-the-counter market, which was the forerunner to the Nasdaq exchange. For three one-year terms, Madoff served on the Nasdaq board of directors. Madoff formed close friendships with wealthy, influential businessmen in New York City and Palm Beach, Florida, recruited them as investors, paid them handsome returns, and used their positive recommendations to recruit more. He also made a name for himself by cultivating relationships with financial regulators. He used an air of exclusivity to attract serious, well-heeled investors. Not everyone was accepted into his funds, and being admitted as a Madoff investor became a badge of honor. Madoff's pyramid, or Ponzi, scheme, according to investigators, began in the early 1980s. As more investors came on board, their money was used to pay out existing investors, as well as fees from Madoff's firm and, allegedly, his family and friends. The Fraud some skeptics concluded that his promised investment returns were untrustworthy and wondered why the firm's auditor was a small stone front business with few employees. In 2001, the financial magazine Barron's published an article casting doubt on Madoff's integrity, and financial analyst Harry Marco Polos reportedly presented evidence to the Securities and Exchange Commission, including a detailed investigation titled, The World's Largest Head Fund is a Fraud. In 2005, the Security and Exchange Commission took no action against Madoff. Large accounting firms such as Price, Waterhouse Cooper, KPMG, and BDO Sidemen reported no signs of irregularities in their financial reviews. JP Morgan, Chase Bank ignored possible signs of money laundering activities in Madoff's multi-million dollar Chase Bank account. In fact, Funds were transferred from the Chase account to London-based Madoff Security International LTD, which some speculated was set up solely to give the appearance of investing in British and other European securities. Because Madoff's firm was allowed to book its own trades as a broker-dealer, no one knew the alleged trades were not taking place. Employees at Madoff's firm were allegedly told to create false trading records and phony monthly investor statements. Madoff pleaded guilty to fraud and other crimes in 2009. David G. Freeling, Madoff's accountant, was also charged with securities fraud in March. It was later revealed that he had been unaware of the Ponzi scheme, and after cooperating with prosecutors, Freeling received no prison time. Thousands of people and a number of charitable foundations who had invested with Madoff, either directly or indirectly, spent the first months of 2009 circulating their often massive financial losses. Federal investigators in the United States are still looking for suspects, including some members of the Madoff family. Losses were estimated to be in the range of $50 billion to $65 billion, but investigators admitted that finding the missing funds might be impossible. Denny Chin, a federal judge, sentenced Madoff to the maximum sentence of 150 years in prison in June 2009. The Victims 
Madoff's two sons, Mark and Andrew, both worked for him, but in different parts of the company that had nothing to do with the Ponzi scheme he was running. Both had been named in lawsuits and are under investigation, but neither have been charged with a crime in connection with the $50 billion Ponzi scheme. Mark Madoff took his own life in his New York City apartment building two years after his father was arrested for running a Ponzi scheme. He didn't leave a note, but both of his his brothers were enraged with their father and hadn't spoke to either of their parents in two years. Bernard Madoff's wife reached a $2.5 million settlement with the feds and stopped visiting him in prison in order to reconcile with their son Andrew. She said she and Bernie made a life-ending pact before he revealed his Ponzi scheme, but they didn't follow through. Catherine Hooper, Andrew Madoff's fiance, has co-authored a book with Lauren Sando called Truth and Consequences, Life in the Madoff Family. The book will not benefit Andrew and Ruth Madoff, but Andrew's fiance will. Many victims of the Madoff Ponzi scheme are outraged and believe that the profits should be used to compensate them. Following the exposure of Madoff's Ponzi scheme, numerous additional financial mis- misappropriations were discovered, but no subsequent swindle matched the size and scope of the Madoff Ponzi scheme. What do you think about Bernie Madoff? Do you think his prison sentence is too long? Let us know in the comments section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.